Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Convos and Coffee with Rob and Carolyn. I'm Rob and I'm Carolyn. she is Carolyn. <laughs> Happy Friday. <laughs> Finally, huh? Yes, Friday's the, like that Snoopy dance, you know. I, I love the Friday. Snoopy dance gifts. They're, they're awesome. Yes. They're great. Well, welcome this morning. We're so glad you could be with us. We are happy. It is Friday, uh, not because we're not doing a stream tomorrow, um, just but because it's happy to be. <laughs> Everybody looks forward to Friday, even when every day feels like the same day all week, like Groundhog Day, you wake up at the same day again, quarantine Groundhog Day. But today is Friday. It's the end of the week for those of us who are at home and not knowing what day it is. <laughs> Carolyn, I saw the funniest meme yesterday. It said Easter Sunday, and then it said day, 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 day. <laughs> and, you know, Taco Tuesday and Hump Day Wednesday, Throwback Thursday, and today is Friday. Awesome. Well, <laughs> Friday. Friday. <laughs> Friday. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> we have a great stream for you this morning. We're going to be in Psalm 130, which is an amazing, amazing psalm. And uh, just a little background on this psalm, um, the history behind it is uh, traditionally it's been called the Psalm of Degrees. Uh, and in the Jewish Mishnah, uh, the tradition surrounding Psalm 120 to 134 is that these 15 Psalms correspond with the 15 steps leading from the court of the women into the court of Israel. And that the Levites and the people would sing these Psalms as they would ascend the 15 steps. Mm -hmm. Also, this Psalm is very, very important in Christian liturgy uh, because all through um, the Christian liturgical cal calendar for the last uh, probably 15 to 1700 years, Christians have sung these Psalms in an ascent. Mm -hmm. And that's why they call it the Psalm of Degree or the Song of Degrees. Mm -hmm. And uh, thousands of Christians for thousands of years. Um, would have memorized these and sung these mm -hmm. or chanted these when they would pray yeah. uh, in their daily prayers. Mine says Song of Ascents. That's right. It's part yeah. of a group of 15 psalms right. from 120 uh, to 134 uh -huh. that are ascents. So that's really uh, amazing. And uh, this one in particular is called the Psalm of the Penitent. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's uh, one psalm that Christians for... Uh, century after century have found comfort in mm -hmm. um, knowing that when we're in the deepest depths of depression despair repentance um, or just the issues of life this is a psalm that has brought life to uh, thousands maybe millions of Christians over the years yeah that's wonderful I know when I was reading it this morning I was like maybe we should do Psalm 130 honey because this is really like ministering to me yeah right? I, it was one that was ministering because in mine, my header, you know, says, My soul waits for the Lord, a song of ascent. And I feel like it's that's beautiful. where I'm at right now, especially is just waiting on God to answer the prayers, you know, like we're just waiting, waiting to get out of quarantine, but waiting, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for God to, um, to manifest his glory and answer our prayers. Yeah, I, yeah. I totally agree. And, this psalm really spoke to me this morning as well. It was really yeah. deep, and I was very touched um, as we went through these eight verses. Well, these eight verses are power-packed with four different movements uh, in these psalms. Uh, the first movement is the David vocalizing um, his desire for God. Though these psalms don't say that David wrote these, um, Christian and Jewish scribal uh, tradition says that David did. Mm. Um, so I'll go with the Jewish scribal tradition because it's usually pretty bulletproof. Yeah, and also when you hear the tone of the writer and the, mm -hmm. and the way, like the heart behind it, and just the tone and the way it's written, it just sounds like David from the ones that we do know are David. And then the ones that are like, might be, might not be. Well, I say they probably are because they I would sound like him. I would agree. The internal evidence in the text indicates that it's him. Even the same yeah. words are used over right. and over the again. Right, the, the heart of what he's saying is there, like when you when you discern it that way. I agree. I'm with you, scholar. All right. <laughs> Ooh, I'm a scholar now. <laughs> and then the next uh, movement in Psalm 130 we see, is um, alignment with the Lord, or we would say repentance, but that word is out of vogue now. 
Mm -hmm. um, because it's offensive. So let's say alignment. It's politically incorrect. It's politically incorrect to say repent. Oh, brother. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Is resting in uh, what God is doing, resting Mm -hmm. and waiting, uh, putting yourself in his complete care. Yeah. And then the fourth uh, movement in this psalm is the uh, vocalization of expectation from God. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm expecting him to do. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm excited. I love how you bring the movements, honey. I like that because uh, there are songs, and as a musician, songs are written in movements. Yeah, that's And uh, all the psalms can be broken down like that into different movements because mm-hmm. remember hebrew is a picture thought language right. and so one thought builds on the next one on the next one and the next one so if you uh have that in your mind as you read them it's easy to see where the step off point so good you're amazing you uh, blew my you're mind. amazing too i love the revelation you bring to the text oh thanks well so. let's go ahead and start we're going to read psalm 130 verses 1 through 2 a song of ascents out of the depths i cry to you O lord O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. Um, Carolyn, why don't you comment first today? Well, you know, out of the depths, I cry out to you. O Lord, hear my voice. And isn't that just the cry of all of our hearts when we're in deep intercession? Yeah. We feel like we're in the depths. Yeah. You know, and inter- I know I've been in the depths. Yeah. Yeah, as a national intercessor, political intercessor over the last um, few weeks, you know, being around you, um, I've seen you move, uh, in my experience, as your husband, into probably grown in the spirit I've ever seen you enter into, um, probably next to interceding for our kids. Mm. Um, but, uh, but this season has been marked with this mantle of um a burden and i feel like i've seen like a, a jeremiah in you i feel like i'm a weeping prophet i'm crying all the time i'm a weeping intercessor it's you know thank you honey i feel like this is where i'm at like oh lord hear my voice yeah you know? hear my voice i know you hear me just hear my voice i'm yeah. crying out out of the depths i'm crying out to you so hear my voice you know, I love it. Um, I took a look this morning at Matthew Henry's commentary, um, which was so beautiful. And Ma- I'll paraphrase Matthew Henry. Uh, and he was saying that uh, every Christian has experienced the depths, mm-hmm. whether it be a per- the depth of persecution, the depth of sickness, um, the depth of um, just brokenness over our own sin, mm-hmm. um, the depth of um, loss in our family, just whatever depth that we're dealing with, even oppression, demonic oppression. Mm -hmm. Um, And he says that it's in the place uh, where we should cry out. He frames it, he says it's the privilege of crying out. Right. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I thought it was such a beautiful thought from such a great Bible commentator. Right now I have the the picture, because I know the depths can, like, you know, we were in Psalm 40 a few weeks weeks ago. I don't know how long ago. And, you know, the the pit and the mud. Yeah. But out of the depths, what I'm seeing right now is that picture. It's a beautiful picture. It was floating around Facebook for a little while where it looks like you're under the water. you up out of the depths and that's what i'm seeing right now as we're talking and that's exactly what it feels like like you're under like you're drowning you're underwater and you're drowning and you're just like pull me up out of these depths and rescue me yeah why don't we pray for people that are in the depths today good idea all right (laughs) i'll go ahead um father i want to lift up to you um the people that are in the depths today um lord the those are in the depths of intercession crying out for covid 19 to break over our nation crying out for wisdom in our leaders um, and unity in our government. Um, Father, those are in the depths of despair because they've lost loved ones or in the depths because they're sick or in the depths because they're sequestered and they're not around anybody Mm -hmm. and they're not having contact with friends or family. Um, Father, those that are, um, Lord, in the depths of depression, um, in the depths of struggling just with uh, mental illness, Um, Lord, those that are in the depths um, struggling, Lord, with financial hardship, Mm -hmm. uh, Lord, is our privilege to cry to you. 
um, Lord, knowing that this psalm ends with an expectation of what you'll do. And so, Lord, today we cry out. We join in the unity of faith. We cry out from the depths. And, uh, Lord, with an expectation that you'll hear us, that we'll move your heart, that you'll respond, and you'll do great things for us. Lord, let hope arise right now. Yes. Let hope be imparted to the people watching the stream this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love your prayers, honey. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, let's go to the next movement. Well, before we do, I want to point something out. Um, we, if we were a Hebrew reader, we would catch this. But because we're English readers and we're translation, we'll miss this. The psalmist, uh, who you and I and many other scholars say is David, uses the covenant, covenant name with God in verse 1. Mm. Jehovah or Yahweh. Uh -huh. In verse 2... It starts with Adonai, mm. a term of endearment. I love Adonai. So did you catch the shift? Yeah. You know, so it's mm -hmm. like, you know, Yahweh, you know, do this, like the covenant name with God, the God who keeps covenant, the, the great I am, the mm -hmm. one who will be who he is, the one who is eternally everlasting, the one who doesn't need anything, but the one who will actually become what you need him to be in your time of need. And then in verse two, this deep term of affection for God, Adonai. Mm, um, and I wanted to point that out before we move on. Yeah. Well, let's look at verses three through four, and that's our repentance movement in this psalm. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. Um, what I see right here, Carolyn, is um, I see the, the psalmist recognizing um, their brokenness, mm -hmm. but I also see them contrasting their brokenness with God's ability to forgive and God's willingness to forgive. Mm, that's so good. That's what I see here. Yeah, and also the psalmist recognizing that he doesn't keep record of wrongs. Mm -hmm. If, if and you know how powerful he is first of all and that we would you know suffer we should suffer great consequences for our sin yeah you know being contrite and understanding the depths of his sin and acknowledging that that god doesn't remember them when we're when we repent what a beautiful picture of grace uh from everything that we have done um, I love that. I, that's so that's beautiful. such a powerful thing. It can't be verbalized. It has to be experienced. Right. Uh, you know, the other thing, Carolyn, that I see here is that forgiveness yields. For and right here in verse four, it says, but with you, there is forgiveness that you may be feared. Mm -hmm. And so the fruit of forgiveness. Which is reverence and honor. Mm -hmm. And so when we have the experiential knowledge of forgiveness, that side of God, that side of tenderness, grace, mercy, and love, and complete uh, absolution um, handed to us, mm -hmm. given to us as a free gift in Jesus Christ, um, the result is there's a amount of reverence and honor that comes on my life that's, that's fruit from right. that forgiveness. It's like when John the Baptist said that... Um, yield the fruit of re for of repentance or mm -hmm. manifest the works of repentance which is honor and reverence for god in our life right and that's what so you may be feared is there because that's what i was looking at yes is that it's not so that you may be feared so that we can be afraid of how powerful you are but that we may reverence you in, in your holiness and be afraid of losing our relationship with you because you are so good that's you exactly know, Go ahead and get to our fourth movement and this is one i really like um there's a beautiful hebrew word here too um so we'll read verses five and six in psalm 130 i wait for the lord my soul waits and in his word i hope my soul waits for the lord more than watchmen for the morning more than watchmen for the morning
Um, the NASB and the uh, ESV, which we're reading from today, do a good job. Um, but there's this emphatic that's in the Hebrew. Um, mm -hmm. That's just this like heartfelt um, cry that um, my soul waits and in his word, I hope. Um, that's kind of the best we can do there. Mm -hmm. um, but the word for hope in Hebrew is dava, and it means speech. And so when we read word, we're thinking, oh, the written word of God, the law of God, things like that. But really what the, the psalmist is saying here is, I need to hear your voice. <laughs> waiting for that sun to come up you know and it's like the long dark night of the soul you want you need to hear his voice and that's the times when you're laying in your bed or honestly anywhere samuel was laying in his bed when he was young but you know speak lord for your servant is listening that's right or maybe being like daniel in the lion's den yeah yeah waiting waiting on the lord and so i think that um that is so powerful what you just you know that's that's what we long for the most that's what intercession is all about it's a communication it's a dialogue with God yeah and um, waiting for his voice waiting for his his promptings waiting to hear him yeah that's so good Carolyn um, and I love this because um, the word isn't isn't um, scripture isn't implied which scripture is great we hear God's voice in the word of God mm -hmm. but this is a the real personal inner inner perception of God's voice, right. personal voice to us. It's like the difference between Lagos and Rhema. Rhema, yeah. And this is the Rhema word, the freshly spoken word of God in the in the middle of the circumstance. And so I'm going to position myself, I'm going to posture my heart mm -hmm. so that I am in a place where the soul so we can perceive right and the fasting part is because we're emptying ourselves yes of our own desires of our own fleshly wants and and desires and we're able to focus on him that's as right. our only desire to f fulfill us and to sustain us that's right Has called to me and I will tell you, you know, <laughs> great, great and unsearchable things that you do not know, like Jeremiah yeah. 33 3. Yeah. And so that's that's the that's the crying out, like call like he's saying, Call to me and I will answer you. Yeah. And so we need to um, wait for the answers. You know, speak I just that's one of my favorite verses, you know, again my favorite. I got lots of favorites. <laughs> <laughs> but one that I fall back yeah. on when I'm in these in these seasons is speak Lord for your servant is listening yeah well that's that's a beautiful thought Carolyn um, and uh, going through the Psalms I'm just developing this great love for the Hebrew language that I didn't have before I tend to like the Greek more um, but uh, I am really really enjoying this stuff it's the very other beautiful. thing I, I want to point out is when uh, God speaks uh, God often speaks in the place of either personal revelation that encourages us, mm -hmm. comforts us, and strengthens us, but also another dimension to the voice of God. God says it, it's decreed, and mm -hmm. it'll happen. Right. And I think there's, uh, as intercessors, there's something that says, well, I stand in the presence, I've made my case, and um, I'm waiting for God to decree the answer. Right. Uh, just like Daniel waited. Um, for the answer God decreed the answer and then there was all the spiritual warfare before it was delivered to him mm -hmm. but I think we're in that uh, season as Christians right now um, especially those that are called to, to pray through this thing to mm -hmm. pray through this pandemic right. is that 
we are like waiting and we're waiting for God to decree. And I think that um, if there was one prophetic word I would give is to wait on the Lord and wait for the decree. Yeah. And when and when you hear the decree, and then watch what God does. I think yeah. there's been a lot of assumptive prophetic words, a lot of cliche prophetic words. Um, once fruit has already been picked mm -hmm. by the prophets. Mm -hmm. um, the real thing that's, that's burning right now is that which is born in the place of burden, born in the place of waiting, born in the place of fasting, mm -hmm. born in the place of deep intercession, crying out in the secret place, not on Facebook Live, right. not on Insta Live, right. on Twitter. Right. It's born in the, in the place where I'm in the closet and I'm burning and shining on the burning lamp. And then the illumination, the Spirit of God hits, and the decree hits. Voice that decree, and then you see God move. Which leads us to the last uh, movement in the psalm in verses 7 through 8, which is the expectation of what God will do. It's so powerful, honey. I love how you brought that out for us. That's really good. Thank you. Yeah, it's very powerful. Let's go for it. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Uh, verses 7 through 8 in Psalm 130. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him there is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. You want to comment on this one? Uh, you Well, let's see. Hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. Uh -huh. Plentiful redemption. I love that. That jumped out at me, too. <laughs> Yeah, you know, because we've been talking about the steadfast love of the Lord uh -huh. ever since we started this, yes. you know, our show. Um, and it's just another, you know, call to attention that God's love is steadfast. And because it's steadfast and the depth of the love is so deep, plentiful redemption, like the depths that it there's no end to the depths of his love and there's no end to the depths of his redemption. That's right. That's so good, Carolyn. Um, check this out. In verse 7, you uh, focused on hope and plentiful redemption. Uh, I did too. Um, the word, the Hebrew word for hope is uh, yachal and it's wait, expect, and hope. Mm -hmm. So it's not Hopeful just... expectation. Exactly. Yeah. It's not just like sitting like a with no hope it right. says hope but wait for hope um but that mm -hmm. it's a hope that's married to faith mm -hmm. i'm waiting with expectant hope i know god's going to do something right. god's not going to do nothing god's not going to be mute god's not going to not answer god will answer and right. this is how god will answer first god will answer was in the context of steadfast love for those who love him right um that's the first one and the type of redemption that i have in the hebrew there plentiful redemption it's um rava and it's super abundant ransom mm, right i mean what more what greater ransom could possibly have been paid than jesus blood yes and this is before Jesus' blood, obviously, yeah. like a thousand years. Yeah, but, but the sacrifices, the old covenant sacrifices looked forward towards, um, that towards the sacrifice. promise in Genesis 3.15. Right. That there would be one who would be bruised, but the one who was bruised would crush the mm -hmm. serpent's head. Yeah. And then the beautiful pictures of Isaiah 53 and others right. that uh, prophesy the suffering messiah and it's just it's the the beautiful redemption yes the precious ransom right the That's super why. abundant <laughs> ransom being on this side of the cross i can't not see jesus in the psalms <laughs> <So> <laughs> well you should see jesus in the psalms no, I know because he said that they spoke about him yes and i want to read it with the hebrew mindset to receive it like a hebrew but I just all the way through <laughs> so there's like, the uh, beautiful redemption is the blood of Jesus. New Testament uh, scholars uh, call that New Testament supersession. 
where we see Christ in the Old Covenant scriptures. Yeah. And that's the lens on how we should read the scriptures. We should read the scriptures with certainly an awareness of the context and the culture, but for us to build practical application Mm -hmm. uh, and appropriation in the scripture, we have to read it through the lens. So I'm not just appropriating. I'm I'm doing no, my I'm uh, doing a good thing here. You're doing your due <laughs> diligence as a lover of God. <laughs> I'm just thinking too when you were talking yeah. about the um, waiting and hopeful expectation. Sometimes because I heard another verse in my head, like with Jesus back in I believe it was either Matthew or Luke or both. Yeah. Where um, of his son says. Lord, help my unbelief. I do believe. Help my unbelief. Yeah. Sometimes in that waiting, hopeful expectation, that unbelief starts out as like creeping in. Uh-huh. And that's, you know, kind of where I was yesterday. <laughs> it was like, God, I know you're good. Just show me where you're good because I'm having a hard time right now. Yeah. You know? And so that, you know, Lord, I know you're good and I know you're going to answer my prayers. And I'm waiting in hopeful expectation. Help me overcome my unbelief that it's that it won't happen. Mm-hmm. You know, help me overcome my unbelief. I have faith. I just need more. Right. You know, grace me with more faith so I can have more hopeful expectation. Yeah. Well, amen to that. Yeah. Um, I love the Greek word sozo. And this Hebrew word for redeem in verse 8, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Notice that it is a will. God will do this. But the word redeem there is the, probably the closest Hebrew word we have to sozo. It's a pada. Mm-hmm. And the expectation is, is that God would provide everything necessary um, to deliver me, but also deliver his people as a corporate people right, right. because israel's mentioned here god's covenant people right the assembly, and we're in that through the grafted and, and, yeah and we're branch. the ecclesia right we're god's right, people right. um we're the church and so our um as intercessors our expectation is that god will deliver the church through this time mm-hmm. everybody not yeah. just you know everybody individual right. clean, shiny, white, redeemed, delivered, and ready to go for the next season. Amen. I I love that Sozo, you know, saved, healed, and delivered. Yes. Yeah. And I always hear signs, sealed, delivered, I'm yours. You know, (laughs) saved, healed, delivered, I'm yours. Right. There goes my oldies again. (laughs) Your oldies, my goodies. (laughs) But, yeah, that the whole church would be Sozo through this whole thing. Amen. We all need that. Well, let's uh, pray for the church, okay? uh, the universal church. All right. Uh, Father, we pray for your people. Um, Lord, we lift up your church, your body, your bride, your sons and daughters to you. Uh, Lord, we have the expectation that you will save, heal, and deliver. Uh, Lord, that you'll pour out abundant grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Lord, that you will um, build us and form us in the image of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, uh, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, who helps us, who teaches us, who guides us, leads us, speaks to us. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to fill us, um, to illuminate us, um, to not only give us power, Lord, um, but also um, wisdom. Um, I want to remind you, this Sunday at 10 a.m., we have a real treat on Refuge Unplugged. Uh, Carolyn and I are going to be joined with Yvonne Camper. Uh, She's an amazing prophetess. Many of you have been exposed to her ministry. But we just break down Nehemiah chapter 4, and it's going to be an amazing time. We're excited for what she has to bring. Yes. And then um, if you would like a prayer your name and number at 909-987-PRAY uh, or email us beloved at executive.refuge at gmail.com uh, until Monday 
Uh, we'll see you. Bye. Bless your weekend. weekend. We'll Love see you guys. Sunday. Bye. Bye.